It's my pleasure now to introduce the first of our Vice Patrons and the update and I'd like to in a moment welcome and ask him to address us the uh, Australian Fleet Commander, Rear Admiral Jonathan Early. Uh, Jonathan essentially has a very distinguished career studying as a maritime warfare officer. He commanded HMAS Ballarat, which is one of our frigates and one of our LHDs. And uh, in, in a very, for him, excellent th fact, but from us, a bit of a sad thought, he's moving on very soon to become Deputy Chief of Navy. Could I acknowledge the very distinguished career that Jonathan brings with him? And on behalf of Rusi and all of us, could I invite Jonathan to give us an update on the fleet? But he actually wishes to show this to you first. So Jonathan, thank you, and when finished, thanks. What you just saw up there was a snapshot of what your Navy, what your fleet's been up to this year. There are some snippets there from uh, clearly the evacuation at Malakuta for the um, bushfires down there uh, from a year or two ago. Uh, but the rest of it is effectively what your fleet's been up to this year. Not just fleet, but also enabled by our, our joint partners as well. So it's been a busy year. Um, your, your Excellency, um, a distinguished guest, Ladies and gentlemen, I initially, when I initially got the subject to talk about AUKUS here, it sort of raised a few eyebrows around the various headquarters down in Canberra. Uh, as you'd appreciate, it's a quite a sensitive topic uh, with a lot of work going on at the moment. Uh, however, and I was going to give you an overview of what the fleet did this year, uh, but that pretty much summed it up in about three minutes. And I thought I would probably need to talk a little longer than, or be up here for a little longer than three minutes uh, to meet 
to meet the request uh, that I had from Professor Michael. Uh, to that end, though, I have uh, managed to get some clearances here to speak a bit more about AUKUS and what it means in the maritime environment, and I do hope you find it interesting. So to, to move ahead, I'd like to begin by, again, acknowledging the traditional custodians of country um, throughout Australia, and I recognise their continuing connection to the, to the traditional lands and waters, and I'd like to pay my respect to their elders, both past and present. I'd also like to pay respect to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander men and women who have contributed to the defence of Australia in times of peace and war. It is certainly a pleasure to be asked to speak here today, and, and I'm glad I managed to make it. Uh, and it's good to see Major General Tomei has made it as well, uh, safely on the ground. I'm honoured to be delivering this speech as the Commander of the Australian Fleet, uh, and as Michael said... <laughs> we'll get there. And as Michael said, uh, I'm only the Fleet Commander for about another three weeks before I, before I hand over to my um, relief Rear Admiral Chris Smith, who is the current Deputy Chief of Navy. So effectively, we're swapping jobs. And I will say he's got the better end of the deal, uh, in my view. Uh, but before I go on to discuss the impacts of the AUKUS partnership uh, on the Royal Australian Navy, I'd certainly like to highlight that, as even today, as is the case almost every day, nearly 2,000 men and women of the Royal Australian Navy are at sea in ships and submarines, providing a visible embodiment of Australian government policy across the Indo-Pacific region. That's a lot of people every week. Uh, it is non-stop whether COVID's happening, bushfires or whatever else, other calamity that we're dealing with this in this, in this country, uh, it's non-stop. We're on constant patrol. So despite pandemics, natural disasters, both at home and in our near region, the dedicated officers and sailors that sail in our ships and submarines are putting the needs of their nation before themselves, as their forebears have done. Service to our country means as much today as it has in times gone past. And I'm very conscious of the building that I stand in when I say those words. The AUKUS announcement in September last year reaffirmed the strength of the relationship with both the United Kingdom and the United States. We share a long history of friendship and cooperation and AUKUS is a demonstration of the commitment of Australia, the UK and the United States to a free and open Indo-Pacific. As has already been mentioned by Her, Her Excellency, at a time of increasing pressure on the global rules-based order, AUKUS complements our collective efforts to meet the challenges posed by our strategic circumstances and ensure the Indo-Pacific remains stable, secure and prosperous and free from coercion. The Defence Strategic Update in July 2020 reaffirmed the need for Australia to invest in high-end capabilities that bolster our deterrence and better prepare us to respond in the event of conflict in our region. In the 14 months since the announcement of AUKUS, the resolve of Australia, the UK and the United States has only strengthened as the strategic environment has continued to deteriorate. That resolve, particularly with reference to the acquisition of nuclear-powered submarines, will culminate in a trilateral decision and announcement by the three governments in early 2023 on the optimum pathway to deliver this capability. It is still too early to speculate what the decisions may be. However, the enormous body of work undertaken by my colleagues in the Nuclear-Powered Submarine Task Force, working closely with our trilateral partners, is coming together and bringing defence closer to completing the task of identifying the optimal pathway for the acquisition of nuclear-powered submarines for Australia within the 18-month consultation period. And before anyone asks me, <laughs> there are no decisions have yet been made, and I'm certainly not inside the tent of that one. Uh, so I don't have any sort of secret bits of gossip I can give you uh, today, unfortunately. However, it is important to recognise that the optimal pathway is much more than identifying the type of nuclear submarine that Australia will require. For example, we're also determining how we, was, how we set up the industrial base and supply chains and upskill the workforce to build, support, oper operate and regulate, most importantly, the nuclear-powered submarines. We must ensure we meet our unwavering commitment to safely and securely stewarding nuclear propulsion technology from cradle to grave. We are also working closely with the International Atomic Energy Agency to make sure that we continue to uphold the exemplary standards of non-proliferation that we have set in the past and will continue uh, to set in the future, and there is much more. We are also making progress to ensure that Australia has a workforce with the necessary skills, training and qualifications to build, operate and sustain a conventionally armed, nuclear-powered submarine capability. 
For example, a cohort of Australian personnel have already commenced higher education and training opportunities in nuclear science and engineering domestically. Australians have also commenced study at the US Bettis Reactor Engineering School and the UK Nuclear General Course uh, happening over there. The decision to acquire nuclear-powered submarines was enabled by the US and the UK, agreeing to share their nuclear propulsion technology with us, which was not an option available to Australia previously. This is the first time in 70 years, and I think only the second time in history, that the US has shared their nuclear propulsion technology. That decision speaks a great deal to the depth of trust between Australia and the United States, and our relationship at all levels, both with the United Kingdom and particularly with the United States, has never been closer or indeed more productive. And that is the true value of the AUKUS relationship. But the acquisition of nuclear powered submarines is not the only benefit to be realised for Australia through AUKUS. AUKUS will also guide the accelerated development of advanced defence capabilities where they have the most impact for both deterrence and operational effectiveness. It is a capability enhancing it is a capability enhancing and technology sharing arrangement to maintain and extend our capability edge by aligning national priorities, amplifying our collective strength and accelerating the development and acquisition of these capabilities for mutual strategic benefit. And in the short term, the pursuit of these advanced capabilities may end up being, in the words of the Deputy Prime Minister, just as, if not more important, than the pursuit of nuclear powered submarines. Currently, the partners have six initial areas of capability focus. Artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence and autonomy, advanced cyber, quantum technologies, undersea capabilities, hypersonics and counter-hypersonics, and electronic warfare. To enable this to work, AUKUS partners are also working to leverage our innovation and information sharing ecosystems to ensure rapid, tangible collaboration. Of note, in the undersea domain, there are two projects previously announced in the 6th of April 2022 Joint Leaders Statement. The AUKUS Undersea Robotics Autonomous Systems project is seeing our nations collaborating to develop autonomous underwater vehicles. And further, the AUKUS Quantum Arrangement will accelerate investments to deliver generation after next quantum technologies with initial focus on position, navigation and timing technology with the application in the undersea domain. These projects will be a significant asymmetric force multiplier for our maritime forces. Outside of, outside of AUKUS, these efforts are complemented by the Australian Government's investment in other capability initiatives to be realised in the fleet in the next few years. With the introduction of long-range strike weapons such as the Tomahawk land attack cruise missile and the Navy naval strike missile. Both a significant advance in terms of range and technology over our current missile in inventory. These weapons will be integrated and operated across a number of fleet, pa fleet uh, platforms from service combatants such as the Hobart class destroyer the Anzac class frigate and our Collins class submarine. And the latter will be receiving a, a significant upgrade through the Life of Type Extension program. Australia will establish an East Coast naval base to support the basing and disposition of future nuclear powered submarines and other undersea warfare capabilities. This new facility will operate in conjunction with Australia's existing submarine base at HMAS Stirling in Western Australia. Engagement has commenced with the respective state governments on the three sites identified, as you would probably know, um, that, are, that are listed, that being Port Kembla and the Port of Newcastle in New South Wales and the Port of Brisbane in Queensland. Additionally, steps have been taken to secure additional land in the vicinity of Osborne Naval Precinct in Adelaide, which may support the future construction of the nuclear-powered submarine construction yard in South Australia. On the subject of exciting technological benefits under AUKUS, it's important to highlight the incredible work being undertaken in the fields of quantum technology, artificial intelligence, autonomy, advanced cyber and electronic warfare, all of which will bring substantial benefits to defence and the joint force. Much of this innovative work is understandably being done behind closed doors, but I wish to reassure the audience that the rate of progress is rapid and at times it's quite challenging. Those challenges will be scrutinised as part of the defence strategic review which, like the pathway for nuclear-powered submarine acquisition, will, will report in early 2023. 20, uh, the, the review will examine force structure, force posture, preparedness and investment prioritisation to ensure defence has the right capabilities to meet our growing strategic needs. We will also explore how capabilities can better integrate and operate with the US, uh, UK and other key partners. Importantly, the AUKUS Enhanced Strategic Partnership complements our existing network of relationships. 
ASEAN and ASEAN-led regional architecture remain central to Australia's engagement in Southeast Asia. AUKUS makes Australia more cap a more capable security partner, better, la better able to support the rules-based order and respond to the changing reg regional strategic environment. I've been reassured by the strength and depth of support, of support for AUKUS from my regional counterparts, who recognise that a stronger, more capable Royal Australian Navy, able to provide a meaningful presence across the Indo-Pacific, will go a long way to ensure that the necessary balance is struck that promotes a free and inclusive region, open to all and for the benefit of all. To be clear, AUKUS does not seek to provoke any particular regional power. Rather, it is about ensuring that Australia has capabilities that contribute to deterring the types of behaviour that threaten the peace and security of the Indo-Pacific. Australia occupies a unique place in the region. As a three-ocean nation dependent on seaborne international trade, Australia requires cutting-edge naval capabilities. The AUKUS relationship is demonstrating the ability to deliver on those advances through cooperation, integration, friendship and, most importantly, trust. Again, thank you for your time. I express our very strong and sincere thanks, Jonathan. Thank you so much. And could I just say that Jonathan has been a very active vice patron and uh, we have benefited greatly in a number of ways from his support but I would also thank him for breaking down what uh, Maxwell Smart used to call the cone of silence. And, and uh, some of you would understand that. Some of you younger people would be saying, what the heck is he talking about? Uh, but uh, I've got to say that in practice we were not expecting an update on OCUS from serving officers. And thank you very much for, for touching on it. So again, could you join with me in thanking the fleet commander? <laughs>